See, this is the Grand Canal, right near where I was. And just to give a little hint of these gondolas. Which will put you back 50 to 90 an hour for a ride. For X number of people. That I think while it looks like a gondola is a tragetta, and I think that's just a quick uh, boat ride across the canal at this point. And there are several of those that you can take. This is the Hotel Antico Doge. Whether it is or not, I don't know. There's some people creating memories. We're on the Pizzali Roma, I think. Or the Campo Saint, something or other Apostoli. This church tower has at least a little bit of design element at the bottom, at least. Not much beyond. Different style, I suppose, in Florence. This is a view off of a bridge off that main drag. Just seemed like a pretty view. interesting old buildings. The shame is that so few should ever really see these very well. Most people that walk by here go right straight by and never look. Had to get this scene since it seemed so <clears throat> appropriate. This kind of ratty, unclean bridge is the famous Rialto Bridge. Which I've certainly seen better times. The last time I was here was about eight or ten years ago with some students. And I think we were moving at the same speed that the tour group behind me is moving. I do remember that came across it quickly with the admonition, let's go. This building that I wandered into is the post office, I think. But I'm not sure it was always that. Notice how the arches get smaller and shorter as we rise up to the top. And presumably this was a loggia and that was all open. Here we have a cistern in the middle of this loggia, a rather decorative one. And with the, I don't know if it's original or not, but original looking pulley on the top. I tried to get to these docks so I could get a little bit different look at the Rialto Bridge, but this belongs to the post office and they are the ones that have access. Judy Larson was chagrined at the grubby look of the buildings in London. This would really annoy her, and it does me somewhat in the sense that I wonder why they don't take something as famous as this and uh, at least try to bring it to some normalcy of its original look. This was built in 1588 and it was the third one. The earlier ones used to open up to let shipping in, but then they, on this bridge, they did not do that and restricted it to, to a canal of palaces. In other words, the wealthy wanted it for themselves. There are three sets of stairs, one like this on either side, and then the main one in the center, which has all of the shops. Presumably these shops in the earlier years were uh, for more of a normal lifestyle goods, but now it's dominated totally by tourism. And the view from the top shows us another street 
for the continuation of tour shops. Looks like a church that's been converted into a tourist shop. I left the bridge and walked directly, I think to my east it would be, but I picked that little alley there that doesn't have a bridge, so I had to go back and come down this one, <laughs> which is part of the fun. This is a beautiful building, almost lost to oblivion, because no one ever sees it except for locals. Notice the Byzantium type arches on it. This would have been called Venetian Gothic. It was a mixture of Gothic and Byzantium art. And I'm wondering too if these, uh, this trash here isn't the result of the flood a few days ago. Here's a man who has it done the right way. Here's a rather simple plain church. I think it's a style and I just don't know what it is. Tucked way back in here. Space is too much of a premium for even churches to have a lot of room around them. Pretty little spot. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can get down to that third bridge. Third meaning I'm on the first. It really is a maze where you don't have a clue where you're at till you get there and look at the map. But I just came out of this space to the left here. And so I'll wander down here. This is a beautifully ornate building, either nicely restored or new. I don't think it's new. I think this is that Gothic, Venetian Gothic, the mix of Santium and, and Gothic. And I've arrived at San Marco Square. I'm going to focus in a little bit tighter on some of this art here, some of this decoration, if you will. Even I, as novice, can sense that this is Byzantium, or at least something from the eastern part of the Mediterranean. But look at the ornate columns. Talk about copying from the Greek and then some. This looks very Byzantium, or I, I don't, I'm not able to distinguish between Byzantium and Muslim. These columns give us a clue. The Greek and the Roman, copying the Greek, would have used the same column heads for designs, for the whole columns actually, uh, different design for each story. But here, on the same story in the same area, they use what appear to be different designs, particularly those three on the right. I'll drop down a little bit lower. You certainly don't have a look of Roman or Greek in, in the classic sense. Maybe these two on the left, Corinthian, maybe. Huh. Look at that, whatever that animal is, with one head, two animals. These panels are exquisite. Now the Muslim religion, I don't know how much that affected the, the Byzantium, um, but it prohibits the use uh, or the uh, worship, if you will, of idols in any form. And so their buildings are massively direct, uh, decorated with uh, symbols, designs, uh, wording from the Koran. 
And this may fall into that same category. I think that's a lion rather than a human. Maybe that's okay. I'm going to pan slowly. This piazza is the only one in Venice that's allowed to be called that, or that East is called that. The buildings to the right are 16th century office buildings. The building components at the end of the square, which is about two football fields long, guidebook says, was built by Napoleon to finish it off. And then the buildings on the left are the 17th century office buildings. This, I think, is the clock tower, although I haven't yet to see the clock. It was built in 1496.